Hello and welcome to the 14th Space Invaders tutorial video. In this video we're going to add the classic moving Space Invaders where we have these aliens that are currently stationary from our previous videos. We're going to make them slowly move to the right, then move down, slowly move to the left, then move down, row by row until they come close to our player which will end the game. So lots of work to do here. Let's start up in global where we need to make some variables. We're going to need variables to know which row we're on. We're going to need variables to know how far our aliens need to move and how fast they need to travel both in the X direction and Y direction because they can move left, right, and down. So we're going to start with our variables for the row. We'll need to keep track of what row we're on and what row we want to go to. So we'll use the variable called row and we'll start at row one. We're also going to make a variable called current row which is going to be equal to currently the row. So that way current row will equal one uh, because we're going to start on the current row of row one, but that's going to change as we actually want to move up and down. Next, we're going to make our uh, distance that we're going to travel in the vertical direction. I'm going to call that row distance. So this is how far do you want your aliens to move down each time it changes a row. I'm going to say 10, so they'll move down by 10 pixels. Then we need a variable for a distance. This is actually what we're going to use to change the distance of the aliens, which right now is going to be zero because when the game starts, the aliens shouldn't be moving vertically. Next, we have to talk about our horizontal direction. We're going to call that a speed, which will be the speed that the aliens move left and right. I'm going to set that equal to one. And we need a direction which is going to be what actually determines to make them move the aliens move back and forth. We'll set that equal to one as well. Uh, these are all the variables we need. Now let's actually scroll down to where we've drawn our aliens in our function draw. So we have all these alien images. We're actually going to remove them from draw. So I'm going to hit control X here on my keyboard and I'm just going to drop in uh, a new function below our function game. So find your close game. Let's make a new function called aliens. And let's close that immediately so we don't forget. And the first thing we're going to do in our function is draw aliens and paste those alien commands. Okay, so now we've pulled our aliens out of our game function and we put them into their own separate function for better organization. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to need to change each of the aliens X position by the speed times the direction. And we're going to need to change each of the aliens Y positions by the distance, the vertical distance. So we're going to do that underneath where we drew these shapes or these, uh, these images. So I'm just going to say allow motion. It's going to be my sub comment. And this is going to be slightly tedious. We're going to have to do this for each of the X positions and each of the Y positions. I'm going to say A1X is going to be equal to A1X plus A speed times A direction. And we're actually going to put these in brackets like so. And then A1Y is going to be equal to A1Y plus A distance. So a speed times a direction is going to be what allows our alien to move back and forth. A distance is what's going to adjust our rows. Now I'm going to copy this and paste it 18 times. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 18 times because I have 18 aliens and my ones are going to become twos. Oops, not there. That stays one. So starting with X, two, alien two, alien two, all the way down for however many aliens you have. All right, so that's all my aliens and we should actually see some direction. Right now our A distance is set to zero, so we won't have any vertical direction, but we should see some horizontal direction. Scroll back up to your function game where we deleted our alien drawn images from, and we're going to add the aliens function here. We're going to call the aliens function, which should put our aliens on the screen. 
and we see them moving horizontally. Now, they're moving horizontally infinitely. What we have to do is once they get to a certain position on the right, they then change direction to move left and down and etc. So we're going to use our outer aliens to do this. Alien number nine is the alien on the far right of the first row, and alien number one is the alien on the far left of the first row. So we're going to use the X and Y position of alien nine and alien one to actually determine when we should change our horizontal direction. So if A9X is greater than or equal to whatever the outer position you want. I want my aliens to change direction when they're about 30 or let's do 40 pixels from the edge. So if A9X is greater than or equal to width minus 40, we're going to say that A direction equals A direction times negative 1. And this will change direction. Close right edge. And then if A1x is less than or equal to 40, because the outer edge is, the left edge is 0, so 0 plus 40 is just 40, A direction equals A direction times negative 1. And that's again change direction, and this is close left edge. Let's push play, and we see that our aliens are back bouncing back and forth. If I want to make them go a little bit farther out, I could say 30 and minus 30 instead, and that will allow them to go a little bit farther, which I think I like a little bit more. Now, each time it changes its direction, it also has to change its row. So we're going to say row equals row plus 1, go down row. And then here, row equals row plus 1. And that's go down row. Now for the vertical code, and I'm just going to add a little logic, horizontal, some comments here. For our vertical code, we're going to have to change our row only for a brief moment. So for example, if we just said that row equals row plus one, and then we change our distance, it's gonna go on forever. Really what happens is when we go from row one to row two, we wanna add by our set distance. Then wait until it's time to go to row three. What we're gonna to say to do this is we're gonna say that if row is greater than the current row, if you remember in global, we made current row equal to row, but once this happens, row is now going to be one higher than current row. So if row is greater than current row, we want our a distance to be equal to set distance. And that's going to move down for a row. Then we want current row to be equal to row, which will reset. We're going to close that if statement, close, change row, and else, meaning that if we're not changing our row, our A distance will go back to being zero. Don't move vertically. Let's see if that works. Set distance is not defined. It appears that I have a typo. Let me just go up to my global to see what I called set distance. Uh, oops, I called it row distance. My mistake. Row distance, not set distance. So up here, I meant to say change by row distance. Let's try that again. Beautiful. So each time it changes its direction, it also goes down by one row. If you want to make these move slower or faster, you could very easily change the variables up here in global. So if you made row distance 20, that would jump down much farther and move much quicker. Uh, that's usually how you could set a difficulty for your game. Now the next thing we have to do is we actually have to make some type of game over screen up here once we've gotten close enough to our player. So we already have our stages set up here. I'm going to add a stage three, which will be a lose screen. 
And in draw, we're going to just copy and borrow our code from the windscreen and say if stage equals equals three, we're going to run a function called lose. And then I'm going to scroll down to where I drew my function win right here. I'm going to borrow all this code from function win to create function lose. And let's make our background red because you lost. Let's change the words to game over and refresh screen to try again. A little bit more lose message there. Okay. Now we actually have to initiate this function at the right time. So let's do a little bit of math here. My bottom row of aliens starts at 210 pixels. My player is somewhere around 475. We can call that more like 450. So if we say 450 minus 210, that gives us 240 total pixel distance. If we're moving 10 rows at a time, that means we have 24 rows to go through until we've collided with our player. So our total distance, our distance of rows would be about 24. So let's give that a shot. Let's go down to our alien code, our alien function here. And let's make a little new subsection comment called game over when at bottom. And we're gonna say if row is greater than or equal to 24, we're gonna say that stage equals three, which is gonna be run, lose, game over. Let's see if that works. We'll press play, start our game, and we'll just wait till we progress down. Now, because our player is sitting at 475 and I set the bottom, I did the math for 450, it should actually stop right before it hits the player. About one or two more rows. There we go. Game over. 